What's up everyone? Welcome back to the shop. It's Christmas time, so we should do a Christmas themed scroll saw project this time. Well, I was reading through a bunch of comic books and I came across this beautiful artwork. This is a cover art that was from a 1940 Christmas special in which Superman had to help Santa Claus to fend off two Grinch Scrooge analogs from ruining Christmas. And I saw that and thought, I need to make that. So that's what we're doing. I took my picture, threw it into Inkscape, and turned it into a black and white picture for scroll sawing. And then I printed it out, which took four sheets of paper that I had to cut and, and tape all together to make one large template. I should really invest in a large scale printer. Older comics did not have a whole lot of colors to pick from, and then certain colors were just really expensive. So it's interesting to see that this one has a super bright yellow background. Well, I just happen to have simply two yellow heart boards that is just enough to do this project. So I went ahead and milled those up, sanded them down to about an eighth of an inch thick and glued them together. So this is gonna be the background for our artwork. And then I have my template here. I'm gonna stick this on here using some contact paper and some spray adhesive. And then we're gonna cut out all of the parts that we don't want, like Superman, and Santa Claus and all that kind of stuff. So we gotta switch our brains around with this. We're cutting out everything and making a silhouette. We want to save the background. We don't want to save those other pieces. It, it hurts my brain sometimes. Contact paper works great for scroll saw and you can pick up a roll really easily at Target or Amazon or something like that. I like to apply the contact paper, then spray the template with some Super 77 adhesive, stick it on, and then I'll cover the entire template with packing tape. That way, as I'm cutting everything out, the template doesn't fray up on me. While cutting out the silhouette, I just kept thinking to myself, please don't mess up by cutting the background. This is one of those things where it's hard for my brain. I don't want to naturally cut through Superman's arm or his leg or something, but you can do that here. The big key is don't cut out the background. So don't accidentally slice through the background to save Superman's head. Cut Superman's head in half. That sounded kind of gruesome. Now, once it was all cut out, I applied some regular wood glue to it, stuck it onto our Wingate panel, threw it back into my veneer press, let it dry overnight. I decided to start with cutting out Superman first, so I grabbed some Blue Mayho and milled that up. Now, Blue Mayho is, from my understanding, the only naturally blue wood in the world. And it is absolutely beautiful. Love using the stuff. So I went ahead and cut out his body, which is the main blue part. And then his pants or his shorts are red. So I used blood wood to cut those out. Typically, I like to make one piece at a time and then add those, glue those into my panel as I make them. But with this case, I decided to make multiple pieces one time just because I wasn't quite sure the order of operation in which I wanted to glue those onto the panel. With the bulk of his body done, then it started getting more tedious, as in doing that chest emblem. Now the emblem itself is yellow. So I use some yellow heart for that. That looks great. And then he has a red S within it. So trying to get the S to fit into that yellow emblem was a bit tricky. Now this would have been easier if I would have stacked my pieces together and then cut them out at one time. That's a pretty common scroll sawing technique. In this case though, I did not do that because I want all the shadows. If you look at the picture, there's a lot of different shadows and dark areas, dark lines, and that's what I needed to do. So that means I cut my pieces out individually and then had to try to make them fit. But the true test in patience was trying to cut out Superman's face. I had to drill out a bazillion tiny little holes. I had to use a Dremel with a micro drill bit, which is less than 1 32nd of an inch thick, and then cut out all those little pieces, his mouth, his eyes, his eyebrows, just cut after cut after cut after cut. It was a lot of cuts. I decided to go with Sycamore for the skin tones with Superman and with Santa. I thought that'd be a good balance between the holly, which is gonna be the super white areas of the picture. I typically use two different types of adhesives whenever I'm doing scroll saw work. I'll use regular wood glue. In this case, I'm using Type Bond 3, or I use CA glue, which is super glue. Now, I will tend to use more super glue than anything. The smaller the piece, the more often I'm gonna use the super glue to do it. They're just much easier to deal with. 
much easier to get that piece glued in exactly where I want it to be. Soups is just about done, so he's looking really good. Only thing I'm missing is the teeth, so I'm gonna add that a little bit later on. So now it's time to start working on Santa Claus himself. Now, as I look at the picture, I see that there's a lot of reds, a lot of whites, so that means I need to bust out some bloodwood and some holly. Once Superman was complete, I started working on cutting all that little bit of bloodwood that I had to do for Santa Claus's outfit. Now, this is where I burned through a bazillion scroll saw blades. Bloodwood is incredibly dense, but more importantly, it's incredibly oily, which means it gums up your blades. So I went through quite a bit of blades and had to jump back and forth to figure out which ones really were gonna work best for this project. I ended up using about four different blades for the project overall. I used a zero to two crown tooth blade. I used a number five crown tooth blade. I used a number five double tooth blade and I used a number five reverse skip tooth blade. And mainly it was because of the blood wood and the density and the oiliness of that wood. Santa's outfit is pretty classic. We all know what it looks like. It's red, it's white. So I went with a whole lot of holly, especially on that big fluffy beard of his, around his hat, around his waist, and then down by his shoe. There were a couple spots in this picture that had green, and it was a bright green, which is pretty common for the time back then. But I didn't want to use the Argentinian lignum vitae that I had. It's super expensive, super rare. So instead, I went with a canary wood that has a greenish tint to it. Now, I know whenever I apply finish, it's probably going to turn more of a brown than a green. But I still figured it would look pretty good, especially for his backpack there, his sack with all of his toys. It just seemed like the right color for that. I can say that the bulk of this project was really spent on Santa Claus and those little presents that are falling out of his sack. There are so many microscopic pieces that I had to make for those. It took a very, very long time. And then to contrast that, I jumped right into making that house that's at the bottom. And that is a lot of really big pieces. So large that I had to mill up some extra wood. So I had to grab a piece of holly and mill it down to its final thickness so that it was just a bit higher than that yellow background we have. And that's gonna be all of the rooftop snow in our house. And because I'm such a glutton for punishment, then I turned around and made the mortar. And the mortar for all of this is white. Well, I looked at it and it's kind of all one giant piece. It's just all those red bricks are removed. So I cut it that way. One large piece with a bunch of squares missing. So it was super fragile. I had to be careful. This is one of the only areas where I glued the piece down before I peeled off my stencil or my template. I wanted to make sure I did that because the template and the tape actually kind of held pieces together so I didn't accidentally break a piece off. After a ton of work, finally my picture is done. Now I'm trying to figure out the finish. So I did do a lot of testing for finishes to figure out which one's gonna work best for this in that 1940s era art. And it really came down to three different spray finishes that I think are gonna look a little bit better than the typical finish that I would apply that would mainly soak it in. That's because I wanna make sure the colors stay as raw as possible. So I looked at three different types of finishes. I have a Rust-Oleum matte finish, I have a Krylon spray poly, and I have an acrylic finish that you would use for like art crafts and stuff. So I tried a couple of these on some scraps and they all have uh, good qualities and not so favorable qualities when it comes to this project. So I think I'm gonna do the acrylic one. This should be interesting. So uh, I'm gonna spray it with a multiple coats of this, at least until everything is covered. I don't know how many coats, I've never used this before. We're gonna see how it goes. Man, what a project. This was definitely an exercise in patience. It looked like a simple project at first, but then as I started working on it more and more, all those tiny little pieces started to add up and it became definitely a challenge. But I'm really happy with the end results. I think it looked cool, even though we did have a few setbacks with this one. The acrylic that I used absolutely did not work. I sprayed a coat on there, came back to apply a second coat, and the entire project was turned white. I have no idea why I did that. I did do a lot of test sprays with test boards, 
Everything looked perfect, so I don't know what happened. I took the whole project, sanded it all back, got all the acrylic off, and then applied a polyurethane to it. And now I think it looks pretty cool. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe check out my main channel, Newton Makes. I have all kinds of good woodworking stuff on there. And maybe watch this other video up here. You might like it. Until we meet again, get your shop and build something awesome.